Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I said everybody then. Everybody. Everybody. Good morning, everybody. What's new? Here we are. Another day. My hair is getting out of control. Is today the day? I think today might be the day that I go and get it cut. <clears throat> I yeah. think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grow my hair. Oh, sorry, my agent's calling. Pause. Hold. We're back. What were we, what were we saying? Haircut. Haircut. So, yeah, potential haircut today for me. Yeah. And when are you getting your haircut? I'm going to wait and grow it out and see how long it gets. Because if it gets to a point where I can donate it again, then that's yeah. a nice, good thing that comes out of lockdown. Any news? Anything going on in the world? I mean, there's lots of things going on in the world. There's lots of things going on in the world. Um, I saw a couple of comments about Jonathan Groff's spitting. Mm. And I can't remember who posted this or where I saw it, but someone was like, that's just the character. That's him being in character because he's playing a mad king. And I'm like, it's not though, because I saw him Ten years prior, in a different production, in a play, not playing the Mad not King. playing a Mad King, and he was just the same. He was spitting everywhere. So yeah, there are some actors who just he's just a he's just a just spitter. do that not purposely. They just Michael Ball. Michael Ball's a spitter, a very big spitter. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just a thing. Isn't it's it? just a thing some actors do. Yeah, so I think Jonathan is a spitter. And it wasn't a character. It's like character choice. it's like in Friends, you know, Gary Oldman. Yeah. Like, it's like, you've had a picture of Polly in your pack. <laughs> and it's like, you're spending on me, man. It's like, that's what real actors do. <laughs> so, let's get to it. Yeah. So, thanks for the emails, guys. Loads of emails. Great emails. And someone has emailed in saying, front of house questions. So, we're going to talk about front of house. This person is called Lottie Bowbrick, or Bowbrick. I don't know for sure, but I'd say Bowbrick. I'd say Bowbrick. Once I said Bow, it sounded weird. Sorry, Lottie. Um, and they work front of house at the Sundine. The Sundine. Yeah, I know Lottie. It could be Lot, though, because I've, I don't think I've ever, like, formally been introduced to her. So I don't know if it's, like, Lot, like Charlotte, mm. or if it is Lottie. So I'm really sorry. Maybe. But I do know who you are because we've met loads. So Lottie has some front of house questions. So we're going to talk front of house. So, um, when you're doing the bows, do you see front of house clapping at the sides? And especially at the top slash dress circle, grand circle thing? The top, not so much. But the people who are right by like the side doors, you can always see. Mm. And it's always like really nice. Yeah, you can see um, front of house, yeah. basically. Because normally they stand under like a light. Mm. There's like a light at the back and they're sort of always sort of lit. But it's, I've had it when front of house have been doing the choreography and that is really off putting. <laughs> no joke. Oh God. Like, <laughs> and then you're looking out performing and then you can see front of house just doing it. Oh no. And you're like, that's really off putting. That's off putting as well if one of them gets it slightly wrong and you're like watching them. <laughs> yeah. I remember, bless her heart, there was this girl who used to come to Heather's a lot at the other palace and the other palace was impossible because you could see the whole audience like at all times maybe bar the back yeah. four rows because it was just so close intimate so intimate um and there was a girl who'd learned all of the candy store choreography yeah. from coming to see it but also like off of the west end live thing and she would sit in her seat and do all of it oh and i could see the girl sort of like looking anywhere but her doing yeah. the choreography yeah you can be seen front of house i think yeah. maybe not so much at the top like you said yeah but especially like in the stalls you can be seen yeah so have you ever worked at a theater met the ushers yeah then years later gone back to the same theater and like remembered them like has it been like the same sort of front of house staff there no i don't think no. so i think the front of house staff has always sort of been different or changed if ever i've revisited a theater or i didn't meet them the first time around Mm. And so when I met them, said, like I'm thinking of like touring with Chitty and then touring with Adams. I don't think I ever met anyone. Yeah, front crew was a bit different. Yeah, crew front of house staff seem to change quite a lot. Only yeah. because it's quite like a sort of rolling job because yeah. people sort of do front of house work and then might go and land a, a, a job, job somewhere, somewhere yeah. and might land a tour or something. So they got. Mm. What I will say is in the theatre, stage door 
the person who manages their stage oh, yeah, door, yeah. they're there for years. Yeah. Like, so you can like leave a job, go away for 10 years, come back, and the person on stage door is the same person. It be the same person, yeah. It must be just a cushy job. A really nice I job. I love working yeah. at stage door. Yeah. I would, I think that's like... They just sit there watching the Netflix. <laughs> they do that sometimes. But then you get to know loads of people come in and out. Sign for parcels. Yeah. Hand over on their keys at the beginning of the day. They are there. They, that is a cushy job. So not so much front of house or like ushers, but yeah. uh, very much, you know. Yeah. We had two stage doormen at the Queen's. Um, they're not there anymore. Both of them left when it changed the sun time. But one of them was called Mark. And he is in, I think he's in all of Simon Pegg's Cornetto series movies. Mm -hmm. So he's in like Shaun of the Dead, World's End and Hot Fuzz. Yeah. Um, and he was in Doctor Who. So he was just like an actor but he was like super he was just super cool yeah. he was really cool and when it came to uh, writing when the curtain falls i emailed him and said because you know half the book was about the stage doorman and i said if you have you got any like advice or any like stories or is there anything that i don't know about your job that would be useful and he sent me back like essays yeah. like he found news newspaper clippings that he'd found when he was like first in the job and just, he just went like crazy, yeah. sending me back all this like info that I didn't know about being a stage doorman, which like massively helped. Mm -hmm. um, number three on the list of questions. Do you know anyone that used to be an usher and is now a performer in the West End? There's, there's, there's loads. Yeah, but I don't think I personally know any. There's a really good one, story. I know what you're going to say. The girl who's playing um, Tracy in Hairspray. Oh no, that isn't what I thought you were going to say. Lizzie. Yeah, Lizzie, yeah. Cause she was in front of she was a she was front of house at the Adelphi when Kinky Boots was there, and she like always wanted to be in it. Because mm. um, I think Chloe Hart was like the original like part that she wanted, mm. and then I think she got the tour. She got the tour, the Kinky Boots tour. Great. Got tight with Jerry Mitchell. Um, who then cast her in Becoming Nancy in a like off Broadway mm. show, so she went flew out to America and then she landed Tracy Turnblad. Tracy Turnblad. And she was the Martha in the Workshop of Heathers over here. Yeah. There's loads of actors who like work front of house. Yeah. Like I think Ollie Dobson, Martin McFly, yeah? He knew he was going to be playing Martin McFly, like in a couple of months' time, mm. but he had to like make some money, so he went to, I think he worked front of house at the palace where Harry Potter is. I think this is I true. I bet that's really fun, yeah. in their front of house. I think, that, I think that's true. Um, so yeah, he had like his like leading mm. part, you know, playing Martin McFly in the world premiere of like Back, Back to the Future in the musical, and he was like working front of house, and I think he might be back there now, I don't know, well not now, but yeah. until Back to the Future happens again, yeah. and when the theatre's open, he'll probably go back there. There um, was a story, what was that show called at the arts? Knights, Knights oh, of the yeah. Rose? Yeah. Was that what it was, was, that what it was so. called? And there was one night where it was like a very small cast, and I don't think they had understudies, or they were at a point where they hadn't like rehearsed anyone in, and one of the parts was off sick, and they were like, well, we're going to have to cancel the show. And one of the girls who worked front of house was like, I know the part, can I... Yeah. Like, can you give me a shot? And she went on and did it. That is mental. From like watching it over and over again, she was like, I've learned it from mm. having seen it every night. And she went on and apparently like smashed it. Yeah. That's such I love a cool that story. story. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good story. Lottie said on question four, mm. I said the front of house will be able to do the show. Yeah. That's, uh, they just said that, which is pretty cool. Um, so five, um, I'm also interested what you think goes into being front of house. Like, how much do we know what they do? The ins and outs. I mean, I only know, like, sort of surface level, like, having yeah. to deal with people, having to sell programmes. The thing that I that just baffles me is having to deal with people. Yeah. Like, having to deal with the people who are, like... People are really rude. This person sat in my seat, like, yeah. they've got the wrong tickets, and it turns out they've actually got the wrong tickets, and you have to be the one to tell them, actually, you're in the wrong, yeah. and you've made a scene. Or you know, dealing with people who have had a bit too much in the interval and are now yeah. being like rowdy or people who are like pissy that the actor that they wanted to see isn't on. And I remember speaking to a few of the front of house at uh, the Gilgood mm -hmm. and 
how they had to deal with it when Alfie wasn't on mm. and how difficult that was. Yeah, I think that's probably the hardest part. It must be about being in front of house, dealing with the people, dealing with the idiots, the the people yeah. that are just really rude. Yeah. And you're like, I'm trying to help you, stop yeah. being annoying. It's the only thing that I sort of learned or the only thing that I heard through the grapevine is that it's good to be on the bar. Oh, really? Yeah, I think you might get paid more mm. and also you get to leave earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, that's what, I mean, that's what I heard. And mm. I think I heard that from someone who was working at the Queen's. So it might be different now. Mm. But when my friend worked at the Queen's, he worked on the bar and he said it's the best. Because I was thinking, should I do front of house work? Yeah. And he said, if you are going to do it, try yeah. get a bar job. Which is good for me because I can, I can actually do the bar. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that's true or not. It might not be true. But I'm pretty sure like if you work in a bar, you just clean down yeah. after the interval, clean down and go. Yeah. Mm. Whereas like, the other like, other members of front they of house. They have to stay to the end. Yeah, yeah, clean up the auditorium. We had a group of um, front of house at the Sondheim, I'm sure Lottie was also there, who used to sit um, in the dress circle whilst we were warming up. So yeah. we used to like wave and they used to like do the physical ones, oh, like no. with us from the dress circle. It was like really funny. It's really sweet because that's it, isn't it? Like 80% of our front of house are like actors, yeah. or are trained actors. So these like to get involved. Have you got any like, stories? Because I've got a really good story. Well, not a really good story, but a story about a front of house member. So we did cash change in Mormon mm. and what we normally do, and most shows probably do this as well, when they do a cash change, there's not like a big press night. It's just like drinks front of house. Mm. Um, so we at the Prince of Wales went down to the Delphon bar, which is where you did edges. Yeah. It's like quite a long bar and the front of the house staff were invited, everyone sort of invited, yeah. crew, everyone, to celebrate the cash change. Um, and it's like free beer, whatever, free wine. Free warm wine. Yeah. Warm wine, the wine's not great. Like a couple of like hours later, well not hours, but about an hour later, this guy who went front of the house was a bit swifty, a bit drunk. So he, he, he became loose-lipped and no. I think he was a bit opinionated anyway, I want to say. And so we're just sort of chatting and he's like, oh, this guy's like, it's good that, uh, the, you know, they've recast the ensemble, isn't it? Because most of them went, most of them got cut, like went. And I'm like, okay, like prodding him because I'm thinking, why is he saying this? Yeah. I'm still a swing, so I, it doesn't really affect me. I was like, why? why? Why do you think that? He's like, well. The last ensemble couldn't dance. They were really, really bad. And I'm like, okay, they're my friends. Like, yeah. He's like, yeah, they, they were just terrible, terrible dancers. And it's actually nice to see like the choreography being done properly. Which is sort of true. <laughs> I have to say that. Because the story is, in the first year, my first year, Casey Nicolor came over near the end of like, or midway through the contract and was like, what, what, who are these boys? They were great singers, or every one of them, amazing yeah. singers, but they, they weren't great dancers. <laughs> so what they did, they like hired out a studio for a week, oh and we God. went back to rehearse and like learn the choreography again, or like really like yeah, get it, like polish it. Polish it. And uh, by the end of the, that year, um, what you normally do, like we said before, you get a form and you go, I'd like to stay another year, I want maybe yeah. this cover or whatever. And I'll say about half the ensemble, the boys wanted to stay, mm. but they all got, oh, got cut. Though. Yeah, because Casey was like, we need to recast and we need to get some strong dancers in. So then the next year, the dancers were better. <laughs> they were much better. But I was a bit like, whoa, like Jesus. But it's, still, it's, it's that thing of like, you don't say that yeah. to someone who's in the show who knew all of the previous cast and was mates with all the previous yeah, cast. It's just... And it wasn't just me there as well. It was like a, a ring of like, the, the, the cast, I guess, yeah. and him, and he, he just sort of was like, yeah, it's actually nice to see the choreography being done right. Mm. I was a bit like, ah, I don't know, it's a bit mean, but yeah, it was funny though. I want to give a shout out to my friend Josh, who worked uh, front of house at the um, Haymarket when I was doing Heather's, and he used to go around and collect the bins after the show, so we'd end up just having a chat, because I'd always end up being yeah. in there, sort of like, slowly packing up my stuff at the end of the, the day. And yeah, he'd come in and we'd just have a chat. He was just oh. really sweet. Didn't you get a cocktail? Did someone bring you a cocktail? Yeah, someone bought me a cocktail as well. I think it was on my birthday, a birthday cocktail. Oh, yeah. And they bought me a birthday present as well. They bought me a couple of books. That's and really Josh good. did as well. 
That's really good. Yeah. Really love the Haymarket front of house. Yeah. And they had to deal with a lot as well at the Haymarket because just because it was a a more enthusiastic crowd. Mm. Um, yeah, it must have been hard. Yeah, so they ha also had to deal with the fact that there were like hundreds of people who wanted to... Because Stage Door was in a cul-de-sac at the Haymarket. It's like a really weird Stage Door. And that cul-de-sac is also like a residential area. It's a really nice street. Yeah. Um, but it is like a residential area where people just live. That's just where their houses are. So then if every night you've got like 200 teenagers at Stage Door who scream every time someone comes out, the first night that happened, like opening night at the Haymarket, everyone was like screaming every time someone came out the door and we had a noise complaint from the Westminster Council. So the next day they were like, you cannot, you can no longer do stage door at stage door. Like if you're going to have people wait after the show, it has to be front of house, like on... Haymarket Street. Yeah, Haymarket. Um, you can't have it in that area anymore because that is a residential area. So then we had to move stage door to front of house, which then meant the front of house staff had to deal with getting everyone like queued up yeah. out the front. So that must have been like a tough job. It must have been tough the first night though when they were trying, because that's the thing with front of house, they also enter and exit via stage door. Mm. So they must have like, when they finished their job and wanted to go home, open the door and there's like 200 teenagers there yeah. they must have been like jesus like yeah. and it must have been really hard to get out for mm. them so they probably preferred it actually yeah being in front of the house yeah. yeah there's loads of stories there's loads of people i know not no but i just i know their background i know there's yeah, yeah. people out there who were in front of the house at the prince of wales or i've seen them do it before and they've gone on to work but not even that, like people who are just out, like they've been in a show, they've been like leads oh, in shows. Say, yeah, yeah. And then they, you know, it work goes quiet for a while, and, but they still don't, you know, want to like leave the world of theatre, so get a job front of house. I know, I've heard stories about like picking the right front of house job though. I think people pick certain theatres because it's, it's easier to, for me, for example, I'd be happier at six yeah because i can't be in six right yeah, yeah i know i know that's like a, a philosophy when you're picking a theater yeah if i went and like say jersey boys was in town and i was front of house in jersey boys i'd be like oh man this sucks i could do yeah. i want to do that yeah but if i do like six or i don't know other ones yeah <laughs> shows like that um i'd be like yeah fair enough it's not for me yeah and it probably makes your job a bit easier. So that'd be interesting to to know if, if like if any front of house staff out there who are also actors, yeah. is it easier to like work on a show which you'll never be a part of because mm. you're just not that castability? I'd also try and pick a show that I wouldn't mind watching over and over yeah. and over and over again. Like I would love to work front of house at Harry Potter and the First Child. Yeah, because I could. Yeah, it'd be really. And fun. it's two different shows as well. Mm. So it's not like you've got the same show every night. Yeah. Like you do have two parts of the same show. Yeah. So it'll always just be a little bit different. I think I'd like to do um, Play That Goes Wrong. I think oh, that'd I be really funny. funny to watch because I think they probably just mess it out as well. And they'll have a lot of fun. Yeah. And it'd be fun to see when the play that goes wrong goes wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was that for the house, really. Anything to add? Didn't think so. Yeah, I think it was interesting. Yeah. Uh, shout out to all the front of house stuff out there. And I hope you are keeping well and busy in this terrible time because um, obviously you've lost your jobs as well. Yeah. Which sucks. But thank you for all of the crap that you put up with because I can imagine sometimes oh it's God. a really stressful job. Because at least with the cast we have to deal with our own, like our, our own drama mm. and like cast drama, whether that's like company wide drama or like, you know, whatever. It's like between us. But with front of house, you have to deal with like the drama that people bring to you oh, because yeah. they've got the wrong tickets or the person they wanted to see isn't on or someone's just a bit too drunk or you know. They're just horrible, horrible people. Yeah, having to, having to deal with Rude. unpleasant people. Yeah. But then on the flip side, I'm sure it's like really magical when you see like people who like had just had their lives changed by yeah. a show and you're watching them watch the show. Yeah. So there's obviously ups and downs to every job, but I get far too irritated far too quickly by horrible people so yeah. thank you for dealing with that on the cast's behalf yeah <laughs> right everyone that's that be safe out there bye
<laughs> don't. That's so wrong. Don't. Don't chop your veg and your chicken on the same chopping board. I think it makes sense. It does. Bye!